Hello everyone. So, towards the end of the previous lecture we saw one of the most important theorems uh, in expected utility theory and that theorem basically gave us the a reason for why we should be using expect the maximization of the expected utility as our way of making decisions. It basically it what that theorem told us that if a certain set of axioms hold then then, then finding a certain set of axioms about our preference ordering on the set of lotteries hold then we really have no choice. Then there must exist a utility function which uh, maximizing which is equivalent to ordering our lotteries. So, in, in other words in other words finding the best lottery and or equivalently the best decision is equivalent to maximizing the expected utility. Right. So, before before I move on let me I will just tell you a few characteristics about of the theorem one of the few points about the theorem. So, let us let us take a, uh, take note of the axioms that we had. The for our first axiom was that there that our set the set of lotteries has a complete and transitive uh, relation given by this by this this curve less than equal to sign. This is uh, the which so what is a comp what is a complete and transitive relation it, it, it is complete if every two lotteries can be ordered and it is transitive if you have the following simple intuitive property that if p1 is le is less than equal to is less is less preferred to p2 and p2 is less preferred to p3 then it must be that p1 is less preferred to p3. So, this is effectively just a logical consistency condition that if you prefer p2 to p1 and if you prefer p3 to p2 then obviously you prefer p3 to p1 as well. Okay. So, this was this this was our first axiom. The second axiom is very reasonable it said that well if p1 and p2 are equivalent uh, uh, if you are, in, are equivalent to each other which means you are indifferent between p1 and p2 then if I gave you another lottery P and I gave you and I and I mixed P1 with that lottery P. What does mixing mean? Mixing if you recall what I told you was that it is you can think of it as if there is another that is you think of it as if there is you are doing a coin toss where with probability alpha you would be choosing P1 and probability 1 minus alpha you would be choosing P. This, this now is another lottery on the set of outcomes and this lottery is is uh, has uh, the this lottery is is de, is basically is denoted by the left hand side here the, the left hand side alpha p1 plus 1 minus alpha p is essentially the probability distribution that you would get from from a lottery like this right so what this what axiom 2 tells us is that this kind of mixed lot, uh, this kind of lottery on top of lotteries or a mixture of lottery p1 with lottery p in a proportion alpha to 1 minus alpha will also be equivalent to mixing p2 with with p in the same proportion alpha to 1 minus alpha so in other words if i if, if with probability alpha if i if with probability alpha if i replace this with with p2 then for you if p1 and p2 are equivalent then the resulting mixed lottery would also be equivalent axiom a3 tells you the same version if of uh, tells you a version of this if p1 was strictly less preferred than p2 so if p1 is strictly less preferred than p2 then mixing p1 with p and mixing p2 with p in the same proportions in the same proportions alpha as before so taking alpha p1 plus 1 minus alpha p or alpha p2 and 1 minus alpha p should give you uh, should uh, should continue to maintain the order of preference that means alpha p2 plus 1 minus alpha p should con should still be more preferred than alpha p1 plus 1 minus alpha p okay. now axiom a4 is a is a continuity axiom axiom a4 effectively says that well if you have three lotteries p1 p2 p3 and they are the preference order uh, is in this way that p1 is less preferred to p2 p2 is less preferred to p3 in that case in that case you should be able to find a mixture of p1 and p2 
uh, uh, sorry of P1 you should be able to find a mixture of P1 and P3 in such a way that by suitably tuning the mixture you should be the, the resulting lottery the mixed lottery on P1 and P3 should be equivalent to P2. So, you should be able to find an alpha in such a way that when you create this new lottery on new lottery on on P1 and P3. So, with probability alpha you uh, you get P1 with probability 1 minus alpha you get P3 this sort of new lottery should be equivalent to, this should be equivalent to the lottery P2 ok. So, if so for ev every such uh, P1, P2, P3 that are ordered in this way you should be able to find an alpha like this. So, this is effectively saying that there are uh, that that there is a continuum of of lotteries that we, that we, that are available to you uh, in uh, you can you and you can move you can uh, find if there is an intermediately preferred lottery that is that can be realized using a lottery on top of lotteries right. So, under this assumption what did what did we see we find that well there that the preference relation P1 less than equal to P2 is equivalent to the expected utility of the outcome being less than equal to the expected utility. Remember this is simply a preference relation that satisfies the axioms that, uh, that I have listed whereas, this here is the numerical less than equal to. So, what, ha what, ha what has happened is that you have a some set of preferences on, on the set of lotteries that are described through your axioms and what has what this theorem has given you is that there is a characterization of that preference relation in terms of a numerical optimization an optimization of the utility uh, of the utility of the outcome where the expected utility of the outcome where the expectation is taken with respect to the lottery that or the probability distribution that you are considering right. So, what this this is effectively told us that so, now we can move to lecture 4 and what this is effectively telling us that uh, you, your preference between decision. So, if you uh, you prefer D 2 to D 1 which we said was equivalent to saying that you prefer the lottery induced by D 1 to the lottery induced by D 2 and that we are we, we now see is equivalent to the expected utility of the outcome under D 1 being less than or equal to the expected utility of the outcome when you take decision D 2. So, in other words max in other words the problem of finding the best decision finding the best decision it becomes equivalent to maximize the expected utility of utility of the decision one other so so this becomes a way of uh, for us or this becomes a way for us to uh, take find the best decision out of a set of decisions one other thing I, uh, I did not mention about the theorem is that this utility function u is actually uh, is actually unique uh, essentially unique Use essentially unique means that if there is another if 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 u tilde is another so if u tilde is another utility function function satis, uh, uh, satisfying satisfying this relation satisfying the relation star then it has to be that u is equal to uh, some scalar s1 times u tilde plus a scalar s2 where S1 
is greater than 0. So, so what this is effect saying is that well you the utility function that, that the theorem provides is actually unique up to a scaling and a shift. So, you can scale it by, uh, by a constant s1 greater than 0 and you can shift it means you can add another constant s2 to it and that does not change that sort of a utility function will still satisfy these, these probably. So, so, so these, these two operations are actually uh, something that since we are maximize, see, since we are finding the best decision d by maximizing the expected utility, these two operations do not change the maximizing decision. The, the optimal d that comes out of this problem and the same that would come out of the, the problem where this u is replaced by, if I replace this u by u tilde, if I replace this u instead by u tilde the optimizing d would remain still the same so long because u, u and u tilde are related by this particular relation right. So, this is this is an uh, this this is what the expected utility uh, theory the, uh, and the expected utility theorem basically teaches us. Now, what is the uh, what kind of a utility what kind of a function is this utility function and what does it encapsulate what what meaning does it encapsulate and what are the things that it implies. So, let us let us look at this a little bit uh, li little bit uh, more in in our previous lecture we had looked at a utility function in which we we had taken this particular utility function we uh, where we took uh, that the we had taken uh, in the previous lecture we had taken this particular utility function if you if you recall we had taken the utility function where utility of an outcome o is alpha o minus o square right so this this particular utility uh, function if you see i i had mentioned to you that this function is is a concave increasing function and as alpha becomes larger this function tends to become more and more linear now is this is this actually turns out to be a very generic property almost in most cases pretty much every case the utility functions have this this shape they are utility functions are typically are typically concave and increasing you, and as we as we saw the quadratic utility function that we took alpha uh, alpha times o minus uh, minus o square was also of that of that kind of nature so if they are concave and increasing then what this means is that because it's increasing u dash of x is greater than 0 usually and u double dash of x is less than 0. This is the this is usually the form of a, of a utility function. So, this is of course assuming that the utility function is differentiable, but under this uh, as an, under this assumption this is what uh, this is this is the, this is how the utility function looks. Now, this only tells us that it is concave and increasing does not tell you a fix for any particular form for the utility function. Now, whether it would be quadratic, whether it would be uh, linear, whether it would be uh, uh, whether it would be uh, exponential or whatever, really depends on the the kind of reference relation that you have to begin with. So, it really depends eventually on the, on this this curved inequality, right? The, the 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 preference relation which define which satisfies all the axioms, it encapsulates the it it characterizes eventually the shape of the utility function. So, based on the kind of uh, a preference relation you would have your expected util the, the pro this, per this problem of maximizing the expected utility can be quite non-linear eventually and in the most general case this would be a very this would be a, a non-linear optimization problem in which u would be some, some fairly nuanced or fairly complex complicated uh, concave increasing function. In, so, in that case therefore, what, what this effectively is telling us is that the, the, 
because because u is in general going to be nonlinear the uh, the expected utility when expressed in terms of the moment in terms of omega would in general have a contribution from all the moments all the moments of omega and not just the mean so because this will have in the contributions from all the moments of omega effectively it, it is saying that every moment would uh, or every moment matters okay uh, every moment of uh, omega matters right so 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 th uh, this effect this also tells us the where we were going wrong when we were just looking at only the averages uh, and and also answers the question of why what actually should one look at well the answer uh, we we were going wrong in looking at the averages by basically ignoring all the higher moments so if you if you if one can think of it this way that you can think of u as 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 basically as some kind of a power series suppose so it is it is say a0 plus a1 a1x plus a2 x square plus uh, plus a3 x cube and so on and then and suppose uh, suppose we have uh, suppose suppose for simplicity suppose f uh, you know f was suppose linear just like it we had uh, uh, suppose f was linear then in that case you would you would get some you uh, once you if you, if you look at the expected utility maximization problem the expected utility of this would in general have uh, would in would would in general have contributions from uh, contributions from say so suppose some b1 into into omega plus b2 into omega expectation of omega square plus b3 into expectation of omega cube and so on and of course additional terms in x and the uh, and additional terms in x additional terms in d where these b1 b2 etc all of these would also be functions of d so but the main lesson here is that you would because because in a general nonlinear once the utility has a general nonlinear form you cannot wish away any particular moment you know the the moment various moments uh, all the moments of omega could in general matter and our fallacy earlier was to somehow imp, uh, per force in for uh, you know enforce that only the first moment should should be considered and all these later moments should uh, should for uh, somehow be ignored right so this is this is where we had gone wrong let us also now see how this this sort of utility function explains the cake versus a house problem the uh, lottery choice that we had or the contradiction that we had seen so let me draw a, uh, a utility function like this so i i'm going to draw a utility function and what i want uh, let us try to write out the expected utility and the cost of the expected utility from the lottery and the cost of entering the lottery right. So, this is this is my uh, this is my utility function what I have drawn here is is the outcome right. So, this is 0 cakes this is 1 cake this is two cakes this is three cakes now the cost um, the let us suppose somewhere here is is suppose here somewhere is 100 rupees now the the uh, remember the expected utility that uh, we that we get from the expected utility that we get from the lottery was 
two thirds the utility of of three cakes plus one third the utility from zero cakes and that I am going to take as zero. So, it is going to be therefore two thirds the utility of of three cakes. So, if I look at the utility that I get from this is my utility function this the utility that I am getting from three cakes is is out here right. So, this is therefore, the, the line here is utility from three cakes. The, this is the utility from three cakes then in that case two thirds of that would be say somewhere around this height. Okay. So, two thirds the utility from three cakes is, 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 is this height. So, let me write this here. So, maybe two thirds the utility from three cakes and, and as you can see that is in this case what I have shown is that what I have depicted is that is actually greater than that is actually greater than 100. 100 which was the cost of entering the lottery and this is the expected utility from the lottery and th this being larger than this implies that I would actually prefer entering the lottery right. Now let us now suppose I, I take this problem increase the stakes. So, when I increase the stakes this 100 is going to be this 100 is now going to be raised even high is going to be raised higher 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 eventually to something like 1 crore. This is the this is what it uh, this is what it would cost me to increase uh, to participate in the lottery. This would be very high somewhere here. The uh, the the utility from three houses would be somewhere here, right? So if you look at so I'm going to just extend this just to extend your imagination a bit and somewhere here maybe is the utility from is the utility from three houses. So, utility from 3 houses of course, it will be much more than the utility from 3 cakes, but the point is that because this is this is a concave this is a concave and increasing function effectively what is going to happen is that the, uh, it, it, the increase is going to taper off. This is a function whose that, incre that increases, but then eventually starts increasing at a slower and slower rate that is because it is concave that is u double dash is less than 0. So, because it starts increasing at a slower and slower rate, it effectively means that there will come a time when the stakes become so high that the, the utility does not increase in, in proportionately. So, if I, if, I, if, I, if I take a point somewhere here say for instance, then this would be for instance my utility from a house of thrice the size, two thirds of that. So, this here would be my utility from a house of thrice the size. Say. Utility from three, hou three houses like this, utility from a house of thrice, thrice the size and then two thirds of that would probably be somewhere here. So, this here is the two thirds times the utility of thrice the house. So, in the second lottery what is going to happen what, what is going to happen is that the expected uh, utility from the lottery is going to be this red level here which is two thirds the utility of thrice the house. But, but the cost of entering the lottery has gone way past that. The cost of entering the lottery is now is, is now here which is the green level the green level here right. So, uh, so because now the cost of entering the lottery is higher than the than the utility that you would get from the lottery the expected utility from the lottery it, it automatically is telling us that that you would not want to prefer you would not want to enter this lottery. So, the earlier lottery was ok with you, but the new lottery is not and because and that is because you have the stakes have risen so much 
that uh, and the the cost has uh, the co the cost has increased linearly but the but the uh, the the utility from it the expected utility has not grown linearly the utility sort of tends to taper off and, uh, and tends to uh, tends to grow sm slower and slower and as a result of that w one doesn't uh, one does not one one tends to prefer the 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 co the one crore for uh, to keep one tends to prefer keeping the one crore rather than get into a a bet like this okay so this is what uh, this is this is uh, this this comes out as a way of uh, as a natural corollary of having developed the expected utility theorem the expected utility theorem also gives us a, a very con concrete and quantitative measure of risk now risk can be measured in many different ways but here is one particular measure so which i can uh, which i'll just tell you about so we say that a decision maker a decision maker is said to be risk averse decision maker is said to be risk averse if he has this if his expected utility with risk you know computed under any probability distribution p is less than equal to his utility from the average outcome under that same probability distribution p now this is a this inequality here is actually an uh, an example of what is called jensen's inequality and this this holds whenever u is concave so if u is concave then you would always have this property that the expected utility is all is going to, is always uh, less than equal to uh, uh, the, the 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 expected utility is less than equal to the utility of the uh, of the expected outcome, right? Or the the mean outcome. So the expected utility on the left hand side is uh, is a, is essentially the utility that you would get from the lottery. The the the, the utility of the expected outcome is is the utility that you would get when you when you are given with certainty the average outcome of the lottery right so the the right hand side the right hand side here is the utility utility when the average outcome is given with certainty utility of the when the average outcome is with certainty and this is the utility of the lottery now what does this mean uh, for what does it mean for a uh, decision maker to be risk averse? It basically means that a decision maker does not prefer the lottery uh, as compared to give, being given the average outcome of the lottery with certainty. So, although the lottery gives gives him a chance of getting more than the average, he always prefers getting the average with certainty as compared to participation in a lottery in which the uh, in which you know things could go either way, right? So there is a so our this is what it means for a risk uh, for a decision maker to be risk covers. So most decision makers essential uh, and most ways of posing a problem are, are problems uh, have in them this property that they they involve they they uh, they assume they have utility functions that are risk covers. So a utility function would be uh, would any concave utility function would have this this particular property. 
However, there are some exceptions where there are some individuals who are risk loving or who's risk seeking or risk preferring in which case uh, for, for whom this inequality actually reverses. So, they prefer they, they, they enjoy the risk, they prefer taking the risk as compared to taking the certain the, the outcome which is which is available with certainty. So, we will not go ahead get into those kind of problems in, the, uh, in this course. So, a measure of one measure of, of risk here is a measure of, of risk that can that we can talk of is, is, is as follows. Now, motivated from here we can ask the question. So, suppose if you if you had the option of if you had suppose you had the option of buying insurance to get get away from uh, get away from uncertainty ok. So, suppose suppose someone made you this offer suppose you pay y an amount y to get the average outcome outcome with certainty ok. So, then what you would have gotten is you would have got you have uh, uh, given you have you are receiving the average outcome with certainty ok, but you are paying y for it alright. So, uh, now question is what is this what should be the y for which for for which what is the maximum y that you would be willing to pay well it is the y for which the utility from the average outcome and now here i'm assuming the the outcomes are all just uh, uh, scalars so the utility from the average outcome minus the y that you have paid this this is what you are going to get with certainty right you are going to get an average outcome and you are also going to be uh, uh, you are also going to be uh, poorer by an amount y. So, the utility from from receiving uh, the average outcome minus y, minus y that you have already paid for it this should be equal to the expected utility the expected utility of the outcome. So, here where x is a random variable. So, if you have a random variable x then you can ask what the, the, the maximum y you can ask uh, what should be the y I, I should pay to get away from the uncertainty in x well the amount that you the maximum amount you would be willing to pay is is the y such that u of expectation of x minus y should be equal to the expectation of u of uh, should be equal to the expectation of u of x right. So, now uh, we can try to do the following approximation. So, suppose I approximate with uh, you know so a kind of Taylor series type of approximation I approximate this as roughly u uh, u of you expected of the av u of the average outcome plus uh, sorry minus y times u dash of the average outcome plus terms that are very that are that are say small in y I can also do the same for the other for the term on the right hand side I can write expected the expected utility as say the uh, as again using using the Taylor series of uh, uh, expansion can write that this is the expectation of u of u evaluated at the average plus deviation of x from the average times u dash evaluated at the average plus the second 
deviation plus half times the x minus the average squared times u double dash evaluated at the average plus a bunch of other terms that are that uh, that are small o of x minus the average of x. That is the expectation of all of this. Right. So, now equating these uh, these two what we find is that so you can see a few things cancel out here. Um, so, this this here when I take the expectation of this particular term this is going to be 0. So, the u dash evaluated at the average is going to disappear. This term is a constant it will it will come out of the expectation. So, what we are eventually left with is is uh, the an equation like this an equation where we say where we find that the uh, the y that you need to pay is 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 uh, equal to some is roughly equal to something like this it's negative half sigma square u double dash of the average u double the u, u double dash of the average outcome divided by u dash of the average outcome plus um, plus terms that are that are this where what is sigma square well sigma square is nothing but the variance sigma square here is the variance is the variance of x sigma square is the variance of x so this this coefficient this particular thing that we have here this quantity here actually the negative of that the negative of u double dash divided by u dash is r is you can think of this as a measure of risk aversion so you can the r of x which is defined as negative of u double dash x divided by u dash x this is a, a what is called the arrow prat measure of risk aversion and it all it, it what this measure basically is telling you is is how much insurance would you be what is the maximum insurance you would be willing to pay to get away from uncertainty and get the average outcome of uh, of the lottery instead okay to get uh, to in, in exchange for participation in the lot in exchange for participating getting into the lottery itself how much insurance are you willing to pay to get the average outcome of the lottery and that that the amount you are willing to pay scales uh, roughly as something like this be with this coefficient uh, u double dash x divided by u dash x. You can see also that this 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 measure of risk aversion actually uh, increases with uh, increases with x uh, uh, so, uh, sorry decreases with x. So, what this means uh, the reason for that is uh, uh, usually so what this means is people effectively as as their wealth increases as the x increases people become less and less risk averse. Okay. So, this all of these beautiful consequences are coming out as a result of uh, of result of a formal way of thinking about uh, about the utility or and about the expected about thinking about uh, decision making under uncertainty in a formal way and through the expected utility theory. Okay. So, we will discuss more on the other side of uh, on in the next lecture.